Here's a rundown of the physical properties of nitrous oxide. First, it is a colorless, odorless gas. Most people can't smell it. Some people say they can smell a sweet smell, but most people can't smell it. When it is compressed into a cylinder, it becomes a liquid. The pressure of a full cylinder of nitrous will reach about 750 PSI and it will continue to reach 750 until almost all of the liquid is gone and then the pressure comes down quickly. So usually a nitrous cylinder will last between 25 and 35 patients if these procedures are 15 to 20 minutes long. So there's a lot of nitrous in a nitrous cylinder. As opposed to oxygen, where when it's compressed, it still remains a gas when it's compressed into a cylinder and it will read 2,000 PSI when it's full and will gradually come down as the oxygen is depleted. So at half a tank, it will read 1,000. At a quarter of a tank, it will read 500. So you can easily tell as the oxygen tank is being used up, but the nitrous will remain at 750 throughout. Now an oxygen tank will last anywhere from four to eight patients, depending on duration of the procedures. The specific gravity of nitrous is 1.53. Nitrous is non-flammable. It supports combustion, just like oxygen supports combustion, but it by itself is not flammable. You always need a fuel and you need a spark. The potency of nitrous is very low. Just to give you a comparison, the inhalation agents used in the operating room, two examples would be sevoflurane and desflurane. Sevoflurane, the concentration that you get anesthetic levels, is uh, around 4%. Uh, for desflurane, is around 8%. In order to achieve a similar effect with nitrous, you would have to administer 104%. Now, obviously, it's impossible to give more than 100% of anything, but remember, the machine, the Accutron flow meter, maxes out at 70%, so it, you'll never get up to anywhere near that concentration. That adds to the safety of nitrous. The potency of nitrous is reduced by altitude. At elevations of 5,000 feet or higher, the potency of nitrous is reduced by 50%. This is why it's important to be able to administer higher concentrations. At sea levels, we almost never go above 45%, but at elevations of 5,000 feet or higher, you might need to administer 60 or 70%, which would be equivalent to 30 or 35% at sea level. The factors that increase the potency of nitrous are age. The older the individual, the more effective nitrous is. In younger patients, you might need to use higher concentrations than you do in older patients. Also, if it's combined with other medications such as opioids or benzodiazepines, those agents can act synergistically with nitrous. So meaning that uh, one plus one would be more than three. So very important to be careful with that. The pharmacokinetics of nitrous are important to understand. 99.99% of the nitrous that is inhaled will be exhaled. There is almost no metabolism of nitrous by the body. The only metabolism happens by gut bacteria. Solubility of nitrous in the bloodstream is very low. This is the reason that it is so rapid onset and offset. So when the concentration in the lungs is high and in the bloodstream obviously there's zero when you first start, it forces the nitrous into the lungs and it equilibrates very quickly with the brain because it wants to come out of, of the blood. Uh, once the nitrous is turned off, it moves in the opposite direction very rapidly because it wants to come out of the bloodstream. And so it will quickly equilibrate with the concentration in the lungs. So the concentration in the brain quickly is reduced. This is part of the reason why you can get diffusion hypoxia. When it comes out of solution so rapidly, it can displace the oxygen that's in the lungs and, and you can wind up with a hypoxic mixture in the lungs. This is why it's important to be able to administer 
100% oxygen at the end. That's also the reason why you want to avoid nitrous in patients who may have an air pocket in their eyes or their ears, such as somebody who's had recent inner ear or eye surgery. Because it wants to come out of the bloodstream so rapidly, because its, it's solubility is so low, it will seek out any air pockets and those air pockets will expand. So it's best to avoid it in someone who's had recent inner ear or eye surgery.